And while on the movie theme, we'll look at Nigeria's booming film industry, popularly known as Nollywood. It isn't just the largest in Africa, but the second largest in the world. But how much is quality sacrificed to quantity? CCTV's Deji Batmus assesses the situation. Who is that? Few could have imagined that? that Nollywood was going to achieve such a rapid and huge success. While the first Nigerian films were made back in the 1960s, many here date the beginnings of Nollywood blockbusters to 1992 and the direct-to-video release of a film called Living in Bondage. Don't you ever come back to this house. In less than 25 years, the era when Western and Indian movies dominated the film market in Nigeria seems a distant past. By some estimates, the industry employs around a million people and pumps around $600 million into the national economy. Nigeria's Bureau of Statistics says it now accounts for 1.4% of the country's GDP. What? Nollywood movies are just as popular across the continent as they are in Nigeria making them Nigeria's biggest cultural export. One man who has been part of this phenomenal growth is filmmaker Zigzulu Okafo, who has several movies to his credit. Basically, we are telling our story. We are telling the African story. It is our, our music, our dance, our makeup, our costume, the way we live, our family life, our love story. So for the first time, um, Nigerians uh, who have been watching, you know, American movies, uh, Indian movies, Chinese movies, suddenly they are seeing what look like themselves on the screen. I think for them, they, they received it with, with ecstasy, and so naturally they, they embraced it. The huge demand for Nollywood movies means filmmakers churn out movies at an alarming rate. Around 50 new titles are produced every week. For a budget as small as $15,000, a filmmaker could wrap up a job from pre-production to post-production in just 10 days. That's the average. But that's at the expense of technical quality. While some people could spend six months shooting a film, you are spending 10 days, two weeks shooting a film, or three weeks shooting a film. You're trying to cut down on accommodation, cost of accommodation, cost of transportation, welfare of the, of the artists, cost of camera, and all that. So, whether you like it or not, because you're trying to cut cost to achieve your low budget um, um, aspiration, the technical quality is inevitably affected. Some filmmakers like Kule Afolayon are defying the trend. His 2014 award-winning psychological thriller October 1 cost $2 million to produce while shooting lasted for 60 days. If probably I was shooting a movie that is less complicated, a movie that really does not require heavy light, a movie that I don't have to shoot for 60 days, I won't be spending that much. Meanwhile, there are smaller, smaller films that people can do and still make international impact. In that area, the reason we're not there is because we have a lot of half-baked filmmakers in Nigeria. Um, um, like Kunle is among the few Nigerian filmmakers redefining standards in Nollywood. All his films have won international awards. October 1 received three awards at the 2014 African International Film Festival for Best Feature Film, Best Screenplay, and Best Actor. People want quality, and they're ready to pay premium for it. The low-quality ones still have their market. You can't totally rule it out. Not everybody can afford to go to cinemas, and not everybody wants to see this so-called production value we're talking about, which is why the low-quality ones will still be selling. But those who want to do high-end film that will make them more money cannot afford to compromise on all of these basic elements. Despite the issues of quality, Nollywood films are making serious inroads in Europe and America, but effective distribution still remains a problem that must be overcome for Nigerian filmmakers to reap the benefits of their exports. Deja Badmo, CCTV, Lagos, Nigeria.